Hi gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll take a deeper look at Mask AI. This is one of the new features coming in Photo Raw 2023. I shared a video a few weeks ago about the big features that are coming in Photo Raw 2023, the ones I think are uh, most exciting. Uh, well, since then, I've got my hands on a pre-release version of the software. So we'll dig into Mask AI, uh, what it is, how it works, and how I see it's going to be uh, most useful, at least for my workflow, and perhaps for yours. Now, I'll stress that I'm going to show you a pre-release of the software so the final version the final shipping product may be a little different you know they're on one still got a few weeks they're tweaking things and uh, you know masking and so forth is a big part of photo raw 2023 so uh, when you get your hands on the product and things look either maybe slightly different than what you see here I'm using pre-release software, we'll remember that, okay? And uh, also, if you are thinking about adding on one products to your toolkit or upgrading what you have, please use my link below and try my offer code SDP20. I can save you 20% off your purchase or upgrade price. So let's look at Mask AI. Mask AI is built into effects filters, local adjustments, and layers as well. Let's start with effects filters. When I click add filter, you'll notice apply with mask. Now when we used to first apply a filter, it applied everywhere by default, and then we'd reach for masking tools to target it to different areas by removing things. Well, with mask AI, you can you can start right away with saying, I really just want to apply things to, you know, architecture, they hover in the background. That's what's in the background there, some architecture. Man-made ground, we can see what the various AI thinks these things are and you know you can select multiple items as I select these if you watched the video on select AI super select AI this will start to look kind of familiar right with super select AI I can go in with that uh, with that selection tool and just start picking on things adding them to the mask I'm doing the same thing here with Mask AI. So uh, if you're more comfortable working with, you know what I really want to do is I want to, in this case, let's say I want to add a little color to the background. And I'd say, oh, you know, for the architecture, I want to add some more color and maybe that, that little bit over there. Then I'd say, all right, color adjustment. I get my filter, I get my mask. So I'm only applying this in the whitish area, which is the background. And then I can do my, my change. Let's say I just do a fall change there to, to brighten up those yellows before and after, right? That's kind of how Mask AI works. It's really similar in vain to how Super Select AI works. It just depends on how you like to operate with your workflow. Now, if I was doing Super Select, I would start by picking things, then right-clicking and applying a filter to it. If you're still used to working with the filters directly, you can tap into Mask AI right away. When you're in that add filter area, you've got them right here. Now, if you forget about that and make the mistake of, all right, I'm working my old way here. I do color adjustment. I hit fall. Oh, wait, I, I didn't want to do that. Open up your masking area. Here's your Mask AI. We can now do paint out because by default, I've applied it everywhere. I can say, you know, I don't want it on the person or the natural ground apply, I get the same result. So you have a couple of different ways to use Mask AI uh, either at the beginning of applying a filter, after you've applied it already, or you might just work with Super Select AI. You know, check that video out for, for that workflow. A lot of flexibility here. Uh, let me show you local adjustments too. In the local adjustments, you know, we've had the add adjustment button for a long time. If we click on it once, we get a set of sliders to do our adjustments, nothing is applied, and we would paint in and, and make our, our changes there. Notice now we've got a little down arrow here. If we click and hold on that button just for a moment, and now I'm, I'm off, the, off the keypad here, I just you know, click, hold, you get this pop-up. You have all those same choices of Mask AI. And you know, once again, let's, let's attack the architecture, the man-made ground. We click apply, we get our set of sliders, as well as a pre-built mask for us. And then we can fine tune things as we see fit. So I added some color to the background and the previous adjustment, let's just darken it ever so slightly. So she's coming uh, more forward here. And that is really the fundamentals of, of, of mask AI. Also like uh, effects we have in the masking area, you have access to 
those same mask AI controls. So if you did add an adjustment and then wanted to tap into mask AI right away, you can. You don't have to you know, repeat and remove things. You've got the access to it, whether or not you add it up front or in the back or anywhere along the way. Now, a bit about these choices here that you see, and you know, in this photo we've seen architecture and you know, natural ground, man-made ground, person. Are those the only choices you get? No, those are driven by the photo that you're working on. So that's where the AI comes in. You know, on one looks at your photo and figures out the different elements that are there, and that's the list that's presented to you in Mask AI. Let's look at another example. In this image, we go into Add Filter, and we'll have different choices. We'll still have flora for the trees back there, natural ground. We have sky now. We have uh, mountain. We have animal. I'm not sure where mountain is. I don't think it's hidden behind my box there. But my point being is these are different choices. They are specific to the photo you are editing. And so the AI is looking at the photo, integrating those choices into Mask AI, and presenting them to you. So uh, I am curious about this mountain thing. That just may be a hey, pre release software. You know, uh, this is still being worked on. Yeah, there's no mountain out here. Uh, but um, that is that is like the power of Mask AI. And this feeds into another feature. I'm still waiting for the pre-release to have this feature in it, so I can't show it to you yet. But these are the AI-powered adaptive presets. This is how you build them using Mask AI. Now, where does Mask AI really fit into your workflow? Because what I'm showing you here, effects, locals, you have super select AI. And you can pick on things, right click, choose an adjustment, choose a filter, and you're good to go. Uh, that is perfect for building up the look. Where I think Mask AI fits in is first, these adaptive presets I mentioned, and I wish I could show them to you, but I don't have that capability in the pre-release yet. But second is for layering. This is where layers, uh, if you're working with layers, Mask AI can be very helpful. Where you know I'm not using Super Select to apply an adjustment. I'm using masking to show or hide specific elements in a layer. And uh, this photo that uh, we, we, we jumped over to here with the sheep, if you watch the Tax Sharp AI video, uh, you'll recognize this one. This is a perfect example to show mask AI with layers because something we didn't have in Tax Sharp AI, we still don't, is masking the sharpening, but we can do it with a layer. So uh, I'll show you mask AI, but in this context of sharpening specific elements. If you recall from the Tax Sharp AI video, if you haven't watched that one, go check it out. When I, I got went into here and I wanted to do some sharpening, fired things up, and when I looked at all of the the, the details here, and if you read it, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, this is way too strong. Let me I'll change the model here, tame it down a little bit. But it was still very strong on the tree line, in in my opinion, and I. I can't mask in develop. Develop settings are global, but we can mask with layers, and I can leverage Mask AI to, to help me out with what I really want here, which is sharpening in the foreground, sharpening on the animal, and, and I want to leave that tree line alone. So uh, let's forget about all of those settings there. Go up to my layers area, and at this point, I'll just duplicate my layer. It'll tell me, yep, I'm going to create an on photo file, which is a layered document. And I'll go ahead and do that sharpening now. I'm working on the top layer, and let's just call that sharpened. If I could spell it, there we go. I'll do both. We have the original model. That is uh, probably going to be that super crispy one. Yep, we'll change that to high detail. And for the purposes of this video, we'll just let that setting be there. All right, so I don't want this sharpening in the sky. I don't want it in the background of the tree line. I just want it on my, my foreground elements. I'll apply that. And now I'll go to the layers area. I open up this masking on the layer and we have mask AI. And I can choose what do I want to mask out. I'm in paint out mode by default. By default I'm showing all pixels so paint out is chosen. You can switch that to paint in if you're working in reverse. But I want to paint out from the flora, that tree line, and the sky. I don't want the sharpening there. Click apply. And we can see I've got a little bit of cleanup to do. I've already switched over to my brush that just happens for me automatically. And I can brush away 
that little bit of sharpening there, and you know maybe run it across the edge of the tree line too, you know something like that. Uh, and if this is too soft, you know I have all my masking tools. I can do the tidying and the cleanup. But where Mask AI helped me here is getting a mask for my entire scene built quickly, and then I can just use my refinement tools, my brush, or, or the whole refine group, all the other masking tools we have. I've got a total series on all the different masking tools uh, that are in Photo Raw today, and they carry forward into Photo Raw 2023. So that's where I see Mask AI really fitting into a workflow, more so in my workflow for, for layers or when I want to build an AI powered preset. And I will show you that once I'm able to show you that feature because that's that's a pretty pretty nice one. Uh, that's gonna do it for Mask AI. Hope you found the video useful. Got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.